Welcome back to Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is the Union Campaign, Episode 6. If you missed the previous episodes, I'll pop a link in the description. There'll be a link in a pinned comment, and there'll probably be a link on the screen if I remember to put it in the right place, because we're going to crack straight on with this. So if you missed previous episodes, then you'll have to go back and check them out if you want to know what's going on. In the last episode, we uh, we finished off with a battle against PGT Beauregard, and it was a pretty bloody affair. 6,000 casualties altogether, 3,000-ish on both sides, but we came out victorious. But that's from the last episode. So we're going to press play here. Beauregard's guys are withdrawing. We'll hold the Army of Northeastern Virginia under McDowell right about here. We'll just we'll keep them here around Manassas for now. We have got about 20,500 men available with almost 3,000 disabled due to wounds, injuries, uh, sickness, all those kinds of things. Let's see. Have we got any perks to give out to any of these units? There's been quite a bit of fighting here, but it doesn't appear so. No perks. Close on a couple of units. What we will do while I'm here is if we've got it available, we're going to upgrade some of these guns. Let's see. What do we got here? So we only got 12 pound howitzers in this unit. Uh, 10 pound of parrots here. So let's go ahead and give out some better guns if we have some available. Let's have a look here. Uh, we've got 12 pound houses. We've got some parrots as well, actually. 12 pound field gun. Uh, 20 pound a parrot. Let's go. With, we'll go with a howitzer for this for these guys. That leaves only two equipped with six pounders, but that's that's fine for now. We are working on finances. In the policies. And let's see how long we've got left to go on that. 18.7 days. That's fine. Patterson has mind finally managed to extricate himself with his valley department. And he's actually unlocked his third perk. So let's just have a look what we can do with that. He's got ambulance corps, which is a good job because he's got only 2,800 effectives and almost 5,000 wounded and sick. Um, he lost a battle against Joe Johnston and kind of became stuck near Winchester and it just resulted in him losing a lot of men pretty much that whole command was wiped out so let's let's see what he has actually available siege train I'm not sure I, I usually just go with these two flying column and ambulance corps they're coming quite handy what else have we got pontoon bridges scouts limelights embedded reporters speed of fame development plus 25% oh, that might be a decent one actually Level up by fighting battles. Well, I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of that. So let's go with that. Embedded reporters. McDowell has got ambulance corps as well. And uh, ambulance corps is a good one. Uh, speed reduction due to wounded soldiers is minus 25%. So, uh, I mean, having a lot of wounded soldiers obviously slows down the command substantially. And this helps with that. And it also improves the mortality rate of wounded. So, like, more of them will be stay wounded or recover, rather, than die from their wounds, which is obviously nice. We've got a new blockading squadron, which is not quite ready to go, but almost. So I think it, we're going to move that out. Let's find somewhere to blockade. I'm thinking on the Gulf Coast here. Mobile. Uh, is it Pensacola here? I'm not. Yeah, it hasn't got a harbour. Oh, yeah, it has. Let's pop these guys around here. Let's have a quick look at our fleet. So we are building quite a few bits and pieces i've queued up a bunch of brigs which are going to be sent out to kind of beef up the defenses on a couple of these uh, smaller blockading squadrons and we'll probably end up building a bit more but let's wait and see what happens with our finances okay so since there's been a new update there's all sorts of econ economy alarms and things going on here that which i'm really not 100 percent sure on what how to fix this Build markets or construct railroad. Alright, so there's no railroad in this area. So perhaps we'll get onto that once we improve our financial situation a little. Although, just say we have a triple A. I'm sure that was less than that last time, but I don't know. Maybe something's changed here. So this is like, what's going on here? This is Joe Johnston. No, uh, this is the army we've just defeated under Beauregard. Just wandering around up here, apparently retreating, and, but they haven't retreated at all. So the Confederacy calls for volunteers. I'm not sure if this is a glitch or something, but it's pretty annoying that they're just kind of sitting there at Alexandria between our capital and our main force here. Now, I could, of course, push up and take them on again. Maybe I'll just do that and auto-resolve it, because I really don't fancy fighting this battle again. But they seem to be stuck. Kind of the same way that... Uh, I don't know what's going on here, to be honest. This is clearly a problem. Like, clearly an AI problem. 
This is exactly what Patterson did with his command as well. He's kind of backward and forward and end up losing a lot of men. So if this carries on, it may be that I need to restart this campaign due to the, the massive upgrade that's just been released. But I'm not sure. We'll see We'll see what happens with this. But it does. it isn't really looking very good. <laughs> Alright, so this is the garrison list. This is also a new feature. Handy. Oh, garrison's all very small. We need to work on those. So we've got about 11,000 men in lines as force here, but that's not really enough to do much with. 20 days left on Dietas troops. So we haven't got enough. We haven't got enough rifle muskets to give out here. Uh, Springfield rifles even. We do have 48,000 Springfield muskets, ordinary muskets, but they're a bit crap. Although better than mixed muskets. Let's see, what, what have we got here? We've got 9,000 Hall rifles. Uh, the only problem with these is their rate of fire is high, which obviously looks good on, like, kind of on paper, but it means you expend ammunition really quickly. Uh, and I'm not overly keen on that, if I'm perfectly honest. Now, the 1817 musket, uh, rifle muskets is, pretty, is decent, but I think we'll just give them Springfields for now. Until we can start working on better weapons. Uh, let's have a look here. Couches... Infantry Brigade from Missouri. Let's go with a planes rifle. A bit extra range and obviously quality on those mixed muskets, but not amazing. 2,300 men in Deitzler's Brigade, but they are going to go home soon. What's the retention looking like here? So we're going to lose, it says 1 1,300 men within three months. I'm assuming that's the guys from this. 45% will re-enlist. Approximately. We're waiting for, not the scouting squadron, uh, we're waiting for Grant's army to get a few more men in and to improve their readiness, and then we're going to make a move on these forts down here. So let's have a quick look at their artillery capabilities. Six pounder guns, not going to do much, I don't think, so let's give them some better weapons. Ten pound parrots, twelve pound field gun army, I know it's not amazing, but it's, it's alright. And let's give these guys twenty pounder parrots. So we've got a ten pounder parrot rifle. 12 pound field gun and a 20 pound apparel. That should be a decent little chunk of firepower for this army. It's only got 41 guns, so maybe we'll add some more, but not at the moment. I'll probably add a second force that's going to stay somewhere around Cairo, uh, simply for recruiting and things like that. So let's see what's happening. Borogard, is he still pulling out? I think he's managed to extricate himself and he's pulling down south, which is all right. Let's hope he doesn't burn our depot down, which would be just right, of course. <laughs> I'm going to send McDowell down here. So, they just teleported back and then started marching again. McDowell hasn't moved. Which I, I don't understand. There he goes. Well, there he goes in theory. He's not actually going. Oh, there he goes. Okay. <laughs> I must have just had it too slow. Too impatient. <laughs> uh, so we're upgrading this depot. We're going to need a bit more supply capacity. So they've stopped here and they're constructing a supply depot as well. Once Patterson gets his act together, we're going to move him over back into towards Winchester. And we'll probably carry on building a fort or something over there. I'm not entirely sure yet. Some quiet this time going on. That's nice. It's giving our armies a chance to get those recruits in there. West Virginia Department still waiting on some more men as well. Building forts here. We want to keep West Virginia safe, secure. His army of the Northwest is actually showing us down here. So that's our funding policy gone through. Let's have a look where we're going to work on next. I think it's got to be either Military 2, which is going to be 52 days, or Industrialization 2. Let's go with Industrialization 2. And let's take a quick look at our finances. We're going to invest in industry. Invest some in agriculture. A bit in the economy. Okay, let's see how, what this does. <laughs> We've improved, increased the funding substantially there. Oh! 
Pork's on the move. He's he's in since he's just passed Cincinnati. Thirteen thousand men. We've got twenty-two thousand men here in the army of the Ohio under John Wool. Let's just take a quick peek at this army before we commit it to any battle. Because I think yeah, they've all got uh, mixed muskets and so on. So let's let's start upgrading these guys. I'll come back to you in a moment when I've done that. Okay then, so we've done some upgrading for Wool's Army of the Ohio. Let's have a quick peek. We've got mostly uh, equipped with a few rifles here. Hall rifle. Let's have a look. Uh, Cooper's brigade has hall rifle. Morrill has hall rifles as well. The rest all Springfield muskets, except for uh, 1817 rifles for uh, Amen. Amen. Not sure. Brigade. The rest all pretty poorly armed. Six pound field guns for the cavalry, sharps, carbine. Twelve pound a field gun. Twelve pound howitzer and a ten pound a parrot. So let's see what we can do here. We can't be having. We, can't, we cannot have Polk marching around Ohio. That's for sure. Does that mean we have a selected rail movement? I think so. So let's. So he's pushing straight out. We've abandoned the building of this because this, this is much more important. We've got 20 days for that cavalry to arrive into the West Virginia Department, and then we'll move them across to take over the building of this. The Army of Occupation has now got its reinforcements, but they are actually building a fort, so we're just going to leave them there and then probably press south into kind of South West Virginia. The Reserve Corps now has 20,000 men in it. Now, remember, this Reserve Corps is not a fighting force exactly. It's kind of a garrison for Washington, but it's mostly used for transferring troops to the fighting front. So we're going to transfer some units right now. Uh, we don't want garrisons on. Into the Army of Northeastern Virginia. So let's do that. Strengthen these units up here. A cavalry division. That's exactly what McDowell's force needs. What else could we do with... Now remember, this is a way to keep this fighting army at high readiness. Right, so that leaves Banks with like 12,000 men. That's I think that's sufficient to guard Washington for now. And he will hit this stage of the war. And that's going to take McDowell up substantially. Up to 33,900 men. Which means we, we should really outnumber them. Yeah, so they've got about 20,000 west of men. And then what else do we estimate here? Hampton Division, 1,400 men. So this is just, they're just hanging out there, really. Um, Army of the Northwest, 3,000 men again. That's a tiny little force. So uh, we, we've put this scouting squadron up here to get a picture of what's going on. But while they're there, we might as well stick them on blockade. blockade. Help out with blockading. Uh, Richmond, Petersburg, all those kind of places. And we'll go straight on ahead and recruit some more men into this reserve corps. And we'll use those guys to reinforce Patterson once the time comes. Okay, let's get this army of the Ohio moving. Let's get Polk taken out. If we can. <laughs> we estimate he's got 13,000 men. They're kind of heading up towards Columbus, Ohio. They're, so they're really going for it here. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure how far north the Confederates got. But I think they did kind of have raids into, into Ohio with cavalry, certainly. But I don't think any army actually marched in there. If I'm wrong, drop it in the comments. Let me know. Certainly not impossible that I'm wrong. All right, so Grant is almost finished building this fort here. His readiness is not quite in the green, but almost. So I think what I'm actually going to do, we're going to raise a new force here. I'm going to raise them. Let's have a look. We're going to raise them in Illinois. Quinby. <laughs> so this is just going to be uh, like... Almost an engineer force, but we're going to just pop a couple of units in here. A couple of small infantry brigades and a, and a cavalry a cavalry battalion, small one. A cavalry brigade, even, sorry, and a small artillery battalion. So let's get them queued up. So these guys are going to be kind of like a, a reserve. It's not going to be the Army of Tennessee. Let's... We're going to call these guys the Mississippi Reserve. 
project. Oh, so we can have a administration reform. So we can actually do one of these. Let's have a look. A point project. Spend two hundred fifty thousand pounds subsidies of available to unlock level one of this project. Not really sure. We've got another one here. Railroad construction. A point project. What else we got? Suppress population. I don't think we've got a problem with the population just now. Uh, can we do anything on the military front? Not really. Uh, okay. I think we're going to go. We'll go with this railway construction project. Construction of new railroads requires a lot of resources and labour. Finance the railroad engineers and increase immigration of cheap manpower for labour, especially from China and Ireland. Each level of this project further increases the speed of construction of new rail lines. All right, so we still have to build the rail lines as well. But let's let's work on that because I think railroads in general will be a very good idea. So we can see two armies here. The Army of Florida, 7,000 men. I'm not sure. What's this one? Army of Tennessee, did it say? 7,000 as well. So we are going to have our work cut out for us. But we have got men available. It's not a problem. They're building a depot down here as well, so that's something to be aware of. Lions are 10,000 men. However, I am slightly worried about pushing too hard with Lions men. We do have men available here in the Army of Missouri. So let's transfer some of those guys through into Lions Army. Oh no, <laughs> Mississippi Reserve, look how messed up it is. Because I had the caps lock on, I'll fix that in a minute. <laughs> it's one of those things I don't really like if it's if that happens. What am I looking for here? Army of the West, of course. <laughs> right, so we're going to move across. Not Blenker, that guy is defamed, we're just going to leave him there. Uh, John MacArthur with his troops from Iowa. Let's get them across into Hamilton's division. And Butterfield can also join Hamilton's division. That's going to take line to almost 15,000 men. And once they're there, we're going to push south with those guys. But Ohio is where I'm looking at the moment. So Polk is rampaging through Ohio at the moment. He's actually... Where's he going? He's going to hit in, going to New York at this rate. How have we not caught up with him? Get after him. Where on earth is he going? <laughs> is he going to hit Pittsburgh? Condition alert. But I, uh, right, so I'm actually going to move Patterson up here. I know it's a, it's a small force, but we can't have. I mean, what on earth is Paul going to achieve with this? Okay, don't just march past them. Take them on. What's going on here? <laughs> Take them on. Confederate extends to three-year contracts. How's that already? Like the, uh, this is the, like this is what I mean when you have the AI on the higher levels on this game. It just kind of it sort of just cheats. What? How is he here? How is he using the real? Oh. right. Hasn't really lost anybody to attrition by the look of things, and he's fighting the smallest force I've got available. So, uh, this is like, this is just garbage, like bullshit. Pardon my French, but this is this is absolute bullshit. <sighs> right, fine, fine. So, what am I actually going to do here? Let's have a look. I'm going to set this to auto-resolve. I, I don't fancy this at all. What an absolute pain in the butt that was. Uh, yeah, of course we lost. So that was just bizarre. Like, I just don't understand how this even happened. How has Polk managed to march all that distance? In, I don't know. Hardly any time at all. Supply depot? I mean, is that, was that ours? Yeah, it was. Right. 
Uh, it is what it is. Let's let's take a look here. So Grant is ready to go. We're going to send Grant down here. We're, we're going to start being aggressive now. Their Western army has popped up here. So they're on the march as well. What are we estimating they've got? 9,000. All right. Okay. If that's the game they're playing, we're going to push down into Arkansas with the Army of the West as planned. We're going to take Carrollton, Arizona, if we can, and we'll take that depot off them. The force under Pope is going to stay here. I think that's enough to hold that place. Mississippi Reserve, they're going to come down to Cairo. Grant is going to push. No, I don't like that. No, 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 no. We're going to push down here into Mississippi. And we're going to build. We're going to build a depot or a fort or something. And then we're going to press on, threaten them. Okay then. <clears throat> So we've got the Valley Department, who have one gun, <laughs> and McClellan's force, the Army of Occupation. So it's McClellan versus Polk. Jeez, that would be an interesting encounter in real life, I think. <laughs> Let's do this battle. Let's do it. <laughs> it said McClellan is six hours away. Right. So it's been a bit of a shambolic little episode here so far. <sighs> I, don't, I still don't quite get how Polk managed to do what he did. He marched through Ohio, slipped past our army, slipped down into West Virginia, covered a hell of a lot of ground. I mean, that army must have marched, I don't know, hundreds of miles in those three days. Fine. We're on the defensive. Well, you've got Patterson's shattered command here. So we need to hold until... McClellan arrives, basically. We're going to set up defensive and just try and hold. If we can't, then this battle's lost and this episode is going down the toilet. <laughs> it does happen occasionally. Uh, I have got this set on the hardest setting, so, I mean... Like, the thing is, the PC... The, uh, the PC... The uh, AI just seems to, it seems to cheat a lot if you set the high... if you have it on the higher settings, and that's all that it seems to do rather than actually improving how well the performance goes. Right, so most of our force is in Stone's Brigade. We've got, well, three guns, actually, it says. Three six-pounder guns, right? <laughs> this is the objective. We're going to hold with this stone wall here. We're going to simply form a defensive line. Keep the guns behind there, all three of them. Tiny units so McClellan should come in from one of these points oh, he might be probably coming over here no doubt well actually no he'll come in from here because that's where he was on the map of course yeah because he's coming from the northeast right so this is the point I'm assuming they're going to go for it pretty much straight away but that's fine let's see what this pans out with we've got six hours to wait so it's in our interest to stay as far back as possible, really. Let's build parapets. Now, allegedly, the parapet uh, problems are resolved but with the upgrades, but uh, I'm not willing to test that in this battle. Maybe in one where we're not so outnumbered. All right, so this entire force is mixed muskets still. Right, okay. So actually, I should have probably put someone over this side, and I'm going to do that right just now. We put our infantry on long-range fire, such as it is. Mixed muskets are not renowned for their range, of course. Why is Kaim riding around the front of the column here? I don't, I don't know. So these guys are building some breastworks over on the left. I should have done that in the first place um, in case they come that way. Which no doubt they will now. <laughs> Don't dawdle, McClellan. Nice and quick, please. Slightly higher morale for the Confederates, I guess, because they just won that battle. Which I maybe I should have fought that battle, but uh, I really didn't fancy it at all. Mostly because I was annoyed with how Polk had uh, 
teleported his way through Ohio. Interesting that Brigadier General Charles P. Stone is hiding behind the stone wall here. Well, not hiding, you know what I mean. No sign of Polk so far. Come on, Bishop. Let's see you. Come and face our mighty host. It's almost four in the afternoon here. I think, uh, oh yeah, it's the 9th of October, so 1861 is going by. Finally a battle not in the eastern part of Virginia. Not involved in those same four commanders. So today we've got uh, McClellan, Patterson, and Polk. I thought we would have spotted Polk by now, but I guess not. Oh, here he comes. Let's slow this down. Smith. Not sure which Smith that is. 2,300 cavalry. Coming down the road. It is almost 5.30 in the evening. Well, afternoon, late afternoon, I guess. Our oh, six-pounders have opened up on Smith's Cavalry Brigade. They're capturing the point, but that's fine. If they capture this point, then maybe they'll set them defensively, and we can hit them in the rear with McClellan's force when they come. That's absolutely fine. We've got plenty of time here. Who's coming now? Let's, let's take a look. Infantry. Picket. Pickett's Infantry Brigade. Cool. Presumably they're going to set up along this hill, maybe? That's absolutely fine. If McClellan arrives anytime soon, anyway. So if he comes in from here, and they set up on this mountain, we'll come and strike them in the rear. And then take it from the front with Patterson's men. Also, that's the way it'll go. Now we're on a minor victory. Their morale is 50.6. I guess it was just estimated to start with. So it's saying they've got 14,000 men, so we are well outnumbered until McClellan arrives. So it's it's in the AI's interest here to press in and actually attack us to, if they can if they can be Patterson's force before McClellan arrives, then obviously it'll be all over. But that's the reason why I deployed a little bit back from the objective in the first place. So because I assumed he would come and take the objective and set up a defensive line. And that suits us down to the ground. Yeah, so it's telling us to attack the enemy. It's unlikely he's going to attack us, because that's not the kind of thing the AI rolls with. Usually, once he's got an objective, he'll, he'll stay with it. But that's... Like I say, that's absolutely fine. That's That suits this strategy, such as it is, into the ground. Uh, why is this brigade... Is that Jubal Early's brigade? Looks pretty tiny. Yeah, let them come. Let them set up. End of day. So that's, that's actually pretty perfect. Where's McClellan? How is he not here? How could McClellan not be here when he was supposed to be here in six hours? I mean, it's again, it's the, it's the AI cheating. It's just, uh, it gives the AI too many advantages when you turn the difficulty up. And not like tactical advantages, but just <laughs> downright cheating. Like, this is garbage bullshit. Where is McClellan? There is a way you can get on here to find out how long he's going to be. Uh, I don't know, I can't find it, but we really need McClellan to turn up here because uh, we're in big trouble otherwise, to be honest. Oh, McClellan arrives. Wait, well, where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay. Well, I was griefing him for nothing then. <laughs> He's arrived. <laughs> Where has he arrived? Oh, right, up there. Right, okay. 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 Where have they gone? Let's bring McClellan's force in. Take my while to get there, of course. OK. 
Can I send these guys out to capture the point? No, let's not. Let's send these guys instead. See what that does. So all this time complaining about McClellan, he was there. <laughs> um, in the top left corner of the map. Presumably he's set up on top of this mountain now for <laughs> as a defensive position. We'll take this point back and then he should have to attack us. We'll see what happens. So yet again, more garbage here. We've bumped into the Confederates. The orders are all messed up. McClellan is literally there, and he can't even tell these infantry units to stop advancing. Like, I mean, he's literally there. The division commander is here. It's beyond a joke, really. And it might be at the point where I almost rage quit. Ah. <laughs> uh. Where are these guys even going? What on earth? So they're just going to keep marching here. They're going to keep marching. They're going to get fired on. They won't return fire. It's just like, it's beyond a joke. As if this, like Colonel McDowley telling me he can't see these thousands of rebels just sitting there. Can't see them. Not bothered. Going to go marching halfway around the world. You know, just take fire, take casualties. Just gonna turn around now, are you mate? I'd like to just line up, please. I think we've got it under control, the, the line up, but our men are gonna be exhausted. Right. Rosecrans's division, they're moving up. Steedman, he's coming up as well. Let's move Patterson's command out of this defensive position. Onto the enemy flank. Can we manage that? McClellan, get your men in order. Why are these guys still going there? Right, let's try this again. We're gonna let's form properly. Like this, please. As soon as you like. Just as soon as you like. Now we're going to give these guys a few minutes to rest up. They're tired and winded because they've marched around like absolute dilems. Patterson's coming up and getting in position. Okay. Steedman and his cavalry are there. We can't really see much going on here. They've got a decent defensive position behind a stone wall, but we're going to take them in the flank. Tired, tiring. That's okay. We're going to give them a moment to rest up. He's redeploying. It's good to see the AI doing stuff. I know I complain all the time. <laughs> it's mostly frustration. Why are these guys all the way back here? Right. So, McCook's division... Zolikoffer, Reigns, Lawton, quite a lot of cavalry in this force. Stuart, 150 men. So he's he's redeploying here to meet the other threat. Let's see if we can stop him doing that. Let's let's push up with these guys.
Right, let's push Rosecrans straight up here as well. I'm going to bring these guns up to the edge of the woods. And hope this is not a disaster. Where is McClellan? There he is. Right, so we've broken that small brigade of infantry. Excellent work. Storm and suffered 300 casualties, which is not too good. But it could be worse. Let's press on. It's taking us back to a minor victory. Don't know why they feel the need to get that close to them, but uh, okay. Messy, messy battle once again. I don't understand why we can only why we've got this uh, charging thing on for Steedman. Why is he not firing? But he's gonna break and he hasn't done anything except for wander around. This is honestly, it's infuriating our men are fleeing. This battle is lost. It's been an absolute shambles from my end. It's just hasn't gone well at all. A really badly planned battle here. It's cost us dearly. We've absolutely been annihilated. But things like this aren't helping either. Like, why are they not firing? Why are we not moving in? Why did Steedman not fire his carbines? Why was he? Why are our men fleeing immediately? Why are they still marching forward? Why are they not firing? It's just like oh, I could keep complaining the whole time. To be honest, with you. what good's it going to do? None. We're finished. Defeat. Absolute defeat. I'm 
major defeat. Oh man, fleeing in panic everywhere. Oh my gosh, this is was. Oh. We lost day 4,000 men, days 1,800. That was an absolute outrage of a battle. It was badly executed by me, badly executed by the men on the ground, badly executed by everybody basically except for Polk. Leonidas Polk, hero of the Confederacy so far. This was terrible, absolutely terrible. There's no other words for it. We've been well and truly uh, schooled here by Leonidas Polk. How embarrassing. We lost 4,000 men. Patterson's command shattered again. McClellan. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nagley. Yeah. The whole lot could be uh, falling in disgrace for all I care. For how well they did. That was poor. Very, very poor. Disappointing. And Polk is on the rampage. Disaster at Clarksburg. It sure is a disaster at Clarksburg. Our national morale's taking a hit there. We're down to 89. The army of occupation retreating in panic. My command has earned a stinging defeat against a vastly superior enemy. Well, I don't know about that, but it was, like I say, it was badly executed by me. Badly executed by everybody involved in this battle, really. Um, pretty poor commanders from top to bottom, and this is a problem for us now. All of this is now in Confederate hands. Somehow, Polk has managed to capture our... Beverly Depot, the depot here at Clarksburg. The West Virginia Department has been sent reeling. The Valley Department is shattered. Army of Occupation, I mean, it was just pathetic, that battle, really. It was really bad. The worst battle I've ever managed in this, I think. Uh, <laughs> that's saying something. So, yeah, things aren't looking pretty. And I'm going to call the episode to a halt here because... Quite frankly, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'll have to have a little think on that. We've got the Army of Florida right here on the Kentucky border as well. But we're going to move... We're going to move uh, Grant's army down. And that should hopefully call him off from there. The Western Army is also on the move. You can see the little arrows. So he's moving up into northeastern... Kind of towards northeastern Missouri and possibly to threaten Cairo. We are moving this Mississippi Reserve down to there, but that's quite a small force. We also have about 6,000 men here under Pope at St. Louis. And we'll see how this goes. It's not going very well at the moment. 8061 started off promising and very, uh, very productive and successful, but... As the year has gone on, we've suffered a few defeats here, a few stinging defeats, as uh, McClellan rightly put there. And this was certainly not a good outcome here, not, nothing that we wanted at all. Um, so the armies of Ohio, I'm going to move them back to Marietta, Ohio, which keeps them kind of in range of Polk's command, and they should be able to then take them on. But we're going to leave that there for now. I hope you enjoyed the episode as far as you could enjoy this shambles. Uh, I hope you're having a great day, whatever you're doing, and I'll catch you there. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Ta-ra for now.